can hold us. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another great day of the LCK Spring 2019. I'm Valdez. With me is Papa Smithy. We got another great matchup, as I always see here, but this is going to actually be a good one. Should be very close. I'm a life up against Dom want to start the night here, Papa. And honestly, I called this one my match of the week, and it's kind of ironic. It's eight days after Valentine's Day, but for me, yeah. this is the battle for my heart. I think one of these teams could be a huge dark horse for LCK Spring, a, a tournament where you already kind of see Griffin being anointed as the overall winner yeah. this halfway through, and yet there could be more twists and turns. And I think Damwon or Hanwha Life, these really up and coming orgs, could be one of those forks in the road, could actually be a really relevant dark horse, but it could really only be one. It feels like there's only so much chance that these teams can jump up. It is fourth place versus sixth place, but not that much to split these two teams. You'll notice only one best of one is the difference between the two plus three game score against plus two. And also, both these teams come off a 4-0 recent match week. However, Hanwha Life, they beat Genji in King Zone. Damwon, they took down Afrika and Jin Air. Does feel like one of those results significant, one of them less significant. And what does it all mean today, right now? I think it's pretty hard to bet on anything other than a three game series. Yeah, that was my original feeling as well, but Hama Life definitely taking a little piece of my heart in recent times. Everybody remembers the game where they were able to get an 8,000 gold lead over Griffin as well, so good stuff from them. We'll have to wait and see if they can make it in here. You were talking about the one game difference between the two teams. That's just because Hama was able to take out King Zone 2-0 to zero when in fact Damwon did go down to King Zone 0 to 2. So that's really just the one match. And it's funny because King Zone is right in the middle of them at fifth place. Now we got business to close. Match 45, guys. There's 90 best of threes in double round robin competition with 10 teams. We're closing the first round robin. A first round robin of an undefeated team and an only defeated team. It's been an interesting time. We close that round robin all around the middle and Hanwha Life and Damwon right now with Afrika maybe starting an ascent. Perhaps there's only spot for one of these teams when it comes to playoffs at the end of the second round, Rob. Yeah, we all kind of know what is going to remain up at the top, as you mentioned before, Griffin, but will Sandbox remain up there? I mean, they've been having a rough time up towards the top at second place. SKT kind of feel like they're doing well there, but only a bunch of these teams, Hama, Damwon, King Zone, can make it in. Maybe a freak, as you were mentioning, but let's take a look at some of the stats here as well. Looks like Hama doing a little bit better in some of them, but Damon slowly winning out in KDA. Pretty interesting stat here. Four and one with First Blood at Hama Life. Three and three, so 50% win rate with First Blood. Means that Damon Gaming's mid-game macro can be a little bit questionable. We know that their top lane, Nogari, is usually where the good things and the bad things coalesce on the side of Damon. Always a fun player to track. A lot of play people would have heard and maybe tuned in because they heard the flame has joined Dom One Gaming, but because we're still first round Robin for our first match of the day, no sighting of Flame till later this week. Let's take a look here of Tempt, who has made it into the lineup here for Humble Life. That was one of Pawn's big uh, oopsie moments, as we have seen here. And Humble Life, they looked really clean up against King Zone, who did look a little bit lost in that series, ended up 2-0, going the way of Humble Life with Depth desperately trying to carry. And if you remember, we build this story of this series as a guaranteed three game series, given how close at the time Hanwha Life and King Zone were, and then we were wrong on that. And that's why I give the tilt to the side of Hanwha Life when it comes to this series. I think that was the more impressive result compared to Damwon taking down an Afrika Freaks lineup, who at the time were not showing the signs that we saw yesterday. So Hanwha Life have definitely been Looking like they can ascend up. This is the team famously that finished sixth in both spring and summer of 2018. They were the line. If you were better than Hanwha Life, you were a playoff team. And Hanwha Life just Ooh. desperate to return to playoffs. Yeah, we were talking about some of the players on Hanwha. That was actually a very big moment for Key, who landed two very key hooks. And uh, down at the bottom left, they were just talking about their team fighting and the focus that they do have in there. But now we're taking a look at some of uh, Dama, Dama Gaming's highlights here. As you can see, some really clean stuff 
from them overall as well. I like how this also has a slow-mo of Ezreal being put in the meat grinder by Linderam. <laughs> a Jin Air highlight clip right here, enjoying it. But Nogori able to get in there, a famous Aatrox player. I know a lot of people want to see Flame because he's one of the ultra legends of competitive play, but I believe Nogori will be the starting top for the great majority of games, and Flame will be there almost as a role model because there's a lot of similarities between Nogori and Flame that we'll, I'm sure, talk about in the future. For today, Tal versus Nogori. Tal, of course, having a bit of a career rebirth. He wants to forget 2018 where he was the whipping boy on SKT. We all want to forget that, Fair Papa. Point. Especially SKT fans, the whipping boy on this lineup had a much better spring season so far. And then Nogori, who his KDA belies the fact that on his day, this guy is one of the most amazingly talented laners that we have in the LCK. Yeah, he's very talented on his lane and sometimes he focuses only on his lane and gets caught out a bunch. And there have been multiple games where he's been 05, 06 on a Victor and Urgot, something like that. But then there are other games where he comes in and he picks his Vladimir and 1v3s. So Dom1 and Dom1 fans hoping for that kind of nuggery tonight. Honestly, I think he actually fits the bill that was last given to Mickey, the coin flip player, because on his day, the results come his way. And it's because, like you say, it's more about the map rather than critical mistakes. However, we'll focus on those mistakes, or maybe some of his pop-offs in-game very soon. First, we're going to introduce the fourth-place team in the LCK, Hamwa Life Esports. Sticking with the lineup that's working, and Tempt looks immovable in mid lane. That means the most improved player of 2018, in my eyes, Lava, cannot find a way into the starting lineup. Yeah, Temp comes in, they try him out, and then it looks like he even got better. You know, we all remember him on BBQ struggling to carry his team. We talked about how he had some really great skills in the mid lane, but never could find a place or a way to carry. But he looks so much more comfortable here on Hama Life. Very good stuff for him. And I can only speak for myself, but I'm scared to big him up. Because like we say, we always talked about Temp as a diamond in the rough. Is it's he just a diamond? That's the thing. We're not ready to say it yet, but we're getting closer. Dam1 Gaming, a squad of diamonds in the rough. Nogari, so tall in the front here, leading out the squad. You'll notice the punch does retain his starting spot, undefeated so far in the LCK. Yeah, another thing you will notice at the back, if you're paying attention to the supports, is that barrel. Free makes a appearance here. First time since the Casper Cup is what you were saying earlier, and he hasn't seen much play. This is going to be his first time here in the LCK Spring 2019. So excited to see if he can bring back his Alistair play to us. Yeah, Alistair definitely the pick we noted from him when it comes to competitive play in both the promotions and the Kesper Cup. But does he have some new stuff to show us? Because it's kind of weird for him to just be jumping out after Hoyt has been a very reliable hand on the side of Damwon. Tal Bono, Tem Sung Yoon and Key. Bono, his Olaf is what we've noted him for, but just in general been one of our stronger junglers after the Olaf. The Lee Sin comes in, and then from there's a bit of a fall off when it comes to effective champion pool. Take a look here at Dom1. We were talking about how um, they were one of these challenger teams that were supposed to come into the LCK and make big splashes. So I'm sure they're not super happy right now sitting at sixth place. They want to catch up to their challenger buddies of Griffin and Sandbox, who are currently number one and two here in the LCK. And I believe if they do get a win tonight, that should move them up to at least fifth, maybe even sixth place, or rather uh, fourth place, to tie up there with Hama Life. And definitely they came in as the more hyped of the promoted teams, and then they watch on as Sandbox even with some rookie errors, goes seven and two in the first round, Robin. Yeah. No ability to match that stat line, but there's something about Dam1 Gaming. Whether we know that in the short term or the long term, it will all be revealed. We're ready for some picks and bans to be revealed. Back on 9.3, we will remind our viewers, because actually, there's never a more relevant series than today, Valdez, to mention this point. And yes, I extended my point so the VOD viewers would get there. Uh huh. Ash's global band and Sung Yoon was on a huge Ash kick recently. Nuclear has played it as well. And the arrow that drained onto aiming was a big reason that Dumb One Gaming were able to take down the Afrika Freaks last week. Ash global band, the support items, of course, those hot fixes are in. But the Ash global band probably affects these two teams more than any other team in the league. Certainly does feel that way. We were talking about how Sung Yoon plays so much of it. Five and one on the Ash. 
is overall a very highly mechanically skilled AD carry, but will be on um, something that he's not as comfortable on. And already, two of the biggest AD carries are panned out here in the first round. Very interesting to see a blue side Urgot ban when, to me, Hamwa Life will have higher priority on Urgot than Damwon Gaming. That's been Tal's go-to, the most impressive pick, and has squared up his laning phase. For Damwon, my question is, do you have to ban Yasuo? Because I think Hamwa Life will definitely first pick it. And I'm also going to actually comment on a ban from Hamwa Life. I'm a big fan of the Galio ban, because looking at Beryl's solo queue, he's played basically every support game as Galio recently. 17 games of Galio, 13 and 4. Wow. Already a big <laughs> pick recently, but that's what they've been favoring. So I do love the ban from Hamwa Life, because otherwise, why Beryl today is a fair question. And I love this hover from Tal. May not mean much to you if you Explain don't know his to name. Us, this. But his name originally in Korean is Tuhal, which means I'm going to play Tron. And uh, given a little bit of fan service, that's one of the other things about Hama Life is that, and Tal, is that all of them seem so much more confident, especially Tal, given a bunch of fan service in person and even in the pick and ban. Because you know what happens when you do fan service when you're losing? People are angry at you. Like, why are you doing yeah. fan service? Get better at the game, son. Be serious. So now yeah. that you're actually winning, you're able to have some personality. Fly, for example, is probably the best trash talker next to Song Yoon we have, but very hard to trash talk when Genji are in the predicament they are. We get the jungle matchup straight away. Boom shakalaka. It's going to be Olaf versus Lee Sin. Matchup that Olaf likes in the early game, but honestly, like a lot of these Lee Sin matchups, first Q is usually very relevant when it comes to the Q from Lee Sin or Olaf. What about first round here, though? We already mentioned that priority could be really high on some very specific picks in this series, and we want to barrel as Alistair. We're going to get it. Well, he doesn't have his uh, new Galio from Solo Q, so from what we know, he's only got that one other pick, so it does make sense that he is hopping onto the Alistair. But what is it going to be for the side of Hama Life here? Now, I don't know how you are at maths, but to me, Lee Sin plus Alistair equals Yasuo. So the Yasuo that we talked about I as a first that, pick yeah. is still open. It's a big one for Tempt and Hanwha Life, but obviously not quite the same synergy with the picks. Are they going to go for a first round Yasuo here? Because again, since Friday last week, Yasuo has been basically perma pick banned. It's a big one, and I'm sure Hanwha Life have that on their minds. And that means they have to pick stuff that will be good into the Yasuo, or at least can survive the Yasuo. They pick up the Tom Kench, which is also another very often picked uh, pick here in LCK. All right, Damwon Gaming, you either get Yasuo now or someone's banning Yasuo in the second round. See what their read is on this particular situation. They're gonna ignore the elephant in the room of the Yasuo this time, go for the Kai'Sa, which is back in priority. And then double ban AD carries exactly. so that they, they can deny so many of them because the Ash Global ban, the two AD carry bans, including Vlad, that could be picked down into the bottom lane. So definitely something to keep in mind. Against some teams, that feels like a big boon. But remember that Song Yoon is a part of the most experienced duo lane we have and a player who has a very big champion pool can play the non-marksman really well as well. So not going to be a huge denial, but will, of course, hurt the composition here. The Sivra ban is the one they go for, and that's because you look at the comp and you're like, Olaf could use some uh, movement speed. Yeah, definitely some synergies there. So liking the Sivra ban and no need to double ban, specifically against Song Yoon. I'm alive. They ban away Jace. It's time for those Noggery bans we always talk about. Only two so far for Hama Life. Apparently it's been a thousand and four days since Tempt and Key's debut in the LCK. So those two guys have been around for quite a while. That one fan celebrating that fact. They came in at the same time. Tempt was not the original starting mid laner for ESC ever. That was of course Athena that went over to the LPI. I believe he started on EDG and then went around a couple of different squads. Now, Tempt replaced him, and when they have finally made the LCK in summer of 2016, already a thousand days since that tournament kicked off. So congratulations on that milestone. LeBlanc gonna be the blind Ooh. pick for Damwon Gaming, and that means Showmaker LeBlanc versus Tempt Syndra. This is a fun one, as Tempt is a Syndra player of note. That he is. It's not something you see very often, but was one of those blind picks and something that can kind of play into everything. And also, as you mentioned, goes straight into Temp's wheelhouse. So fun to see it coming back here as a lot of those mid champions were taken away with all the recent nerfs and stuff. And well, Fiora's back. He was, uh, he's was he been back for a bit now here in the LCK. Fiora is open. 
and of course is a great pick into Yorick. And we saw Noggery on Aatrox recently. Of course, the Aatrox nerfs are something that means it is much more of a sometimes champion. But we want Noggery's Fiora, damn it. Oh yeah, come on. Jax will be pretty hype as well. Which one will he prefer? I, I feel know, like it's one of those two to me. It's Fiora, come on. Yeah. Lock it in, yes. <laughs> That's what the one we wanted. They don't get the huge cheer from the crowd, but when you get a player as talented as Nogari, exactly the champion you want to see. This is one that can go very Fiora-sided if she gets a lead, kind of a Fiora staple for sure. And I think at three items, she wins basically the Yorick lane 100% of the time. Spear Shoujin gets thrown in there and things get good, but just starting off with a Ravenous Hydra is the way we expect. So, number one gaming, pick power through Part of their draft, and then a Fiora means 4-1. Gonna be the big thing here, and also a lot of synergies for Nuclear to swoop in on the Kai'Sa late and get some assassinations. Very true. This also means with the Yorick last pick that Victor will be going into the bottom lane with that Tom Kent, so no AD carry on the side of Hanwha Life. It's only happened a couple of times so far for Sangin to jump onto uh, non AD carries. The awesome dudes, if you will, one time on Vlad. He did get a win, and then one time on Victor, which he took a loss. Cool draft here. A lot of evolving stories. It fell into place outside of the Yasuo. It's kind of conspicuous by its absence from both pick and ban. Maybe game two will be there. That one gets a reintroduction. So big picks on both sides. Tal with the blind Yorick when Fiora is open, and he gets his just desserts there. But Yorick is really strong in this lane, pre Hydra and pre. Fiora getting a couple of levels, and Bono was on his staple. To me, he's a Viking right now, and he likes to be bold. If they play around lane priority, which they'll have in the Fiora lane early, and also in the mid lane, you like Syndra before LeBlanc has access to level six. Given those two things together, there could be windows where you start getting going as Hanwha Life, and Dumb One Gaming can never actually get their items and champions to the level to fight back. Yeah, definitely a lot of skill expression here on the side of Dom One Gaming in their champions. We'll see if they can make it work to a victory here as we hop onto the rift for game number one of Hanwha versus Dom One Gaming. Here we do go back into it on this lovely Friday afternoon. Good to be back here casting some LCK, and this should be a fun one. This is what we have hyped up to be a pretty big match. Should go to three games. Wouldn't expect it to just be the 2-0, but we'll have to see how this first one goes off. Excited to see Tempt back on his Syndra. Haven't seen that in quite a bit. And notice his choice of Keystone and Summoner, Ignite Syndra is pretty bold into LeBlanc, but this is kill or be killed. This is very much Hanwha Life. You can tell from the fact that they have a Victor bot lane trying to wave clear like we saw in 9.1 and 9.2 and not one of those new fangled crit carries. It fits into what we were saying. Get the Olaf started so he has an invading advantage, win the lanes that early games suit Hanwha Life, and then close it out before things like attack speed and crit become the separator in a team fight. A lot of snowball being invested by Hanwha Life, even down to runes and keystones, which is cool to see. Yeah. And my most fun part of the new metas and the changing in the mid lane has just been the, you know, a bunch of the nerfs, but also a bunch of the tanky champions moving out of the mid lane and opening up these matchups that we used to have where there's so much skill involved. And you would just love to get the zoom in on the mid lane because it's it's Syndra versus LeBlanc. I mean, this could go either way, especially with how you mentioned Tempt going for Electrocute Ignite. He wants to try to outplay Showmaker in the mid lane, and that's what Showmaker's name means. So I love this new mid lane meta. Huge fan, and would love to see more of that mid lane. Whenever I don't see a Lissandra or an Urgot, I'm feeling pretty good about us. So I'm with you on that one. And then 9.4, I was able to watch some solo queue streams yesterday, SKT off on the Rift, and uh, there was a lot of new champions with the new Conqueror that are being talked about, even in the jungle, a lot of Rek'Sai that might actually be the meta. Come next week as the Lee Sin matchup, pretty famous for the Rek'Sai there. So I think the winds have changed. They're not 9.1, 9.2. It feels like the preseason was delayed a couple of weeks, but now we're going to get a whole lot of change. And what does that mean for the fa for the fortunes of two teams that are very much around the middle of the pack, but are threatening to jump up the standings? 
Should be some fun stuff already down in the bottom side. Victor doing his thing. Should be very safe here in the lane. We'll have to wait and see if Sangyun can try to get a win on this Victor. As I mentioned before, is just sitting at 0 and 1 right now. But has been known for a bit to be one of the big carries on this team. Well, he's next to his most reliable support. He is 7-2 on Tom Kench. Nine games, actually, one of the highest pick rates we have of any player on a single champion this season. Yeah. So kind of conspicuous that he's been able to pick up the Tom Kench this much. And I think that's probably related to the fact that around him, for the first time in a few years, there's been a lot of champions you consider banning because Tal has been performing in the top side. Bono's been double banned in jungle many times over the course of this season. Lee Sin and Olaf, the two champions of this game, are the big picks in his champion pool. So given that, there's been enough great plays from his allies, so there's been reasons to ban things other than Tom. We're going to not talk about Tom and zoom in on the Olaf. Nuggery does get rid of that box, and now Bono on top of him. The flash does come in. Nice repost to deny that one and just get away relatively easy, but did have to blow his flash. That is one summoner down, and we're looking for Hanwha Life at this point in the game to be playing around strong lane performances and Bono to be the big difference between the two teams to start the snowball that we kind of feel like needs to happen for Hanwha Life to close this game. They want to win this game, or at least have the game in an unlosable position around 30 minutes into the game or earlier. So, gets the first summoner with the first predator. No arguments with that. Returns to his jungle, and we see how they build around the fact that for now, Fiora going to be biding her time. Excited to see if uh, Punch can continue his win streak as well. By the way, he's currently 3-0. and zero. Of course, the last time they did play uh, against a team, it was against Jenner. But uh, still, you know, racking up those wins in a row. And let's close that point, because what did he not get to play against Jenner was his Lee Sin. Punch Lee Sin is what we hyped when we saw him subbed in. And he had one of the cleanest Lee Sin games. And that's a really overused phrase, because clean Lee Sin, shoutouts to Rush, etc. He had one of the best Lee Sin games straight up that I've seen in a long time. He was unbelievable in that series against, I believe, the Afrika Freaks. So because of that, he's back on that pick now. And the moment he hits level 6, we could see some ultra clean Lee Sin play. And that's something fun to look forward to. Another thing to mention, as our observer did just point out, Song Yoon, he does have that Frost Mancy, But he's CSing a bit, as you'll notice. Just some of the minions going the way of Tom Ken so far. He's kind of doing half and half, it looks like, right now. It's not. It feels like half and half when you look at it now, but it's because he didn't start with the Frostmans. He started with Doran's Ring and farmed. Got the 850 gold, and now the farming ends. And every CS that Relics does add Whoa. is mid lane. Oh, the chains land, and Boom. in comes Punch as easy as you'd like. Barely even saw him alive. And Tempt even blows his flash, but he's 100% dead for first blood. And we didn't even have to count to level 6. Even two gr second graders can look at this one and see very clearly that ahead of the clock, they're able to get a kill through the Lee Sin. He's got something to return to, like you mentioned now, that Flash is down. Nice moment for Dumb on game. Really, really nice stuff. You can see that Punch was waiting in the side brush on the control ward to see if the chains landed. And the second they did... Uh, Temp just tried to go for the stun here onto the Lee Sin, but it went wide. And after that, 100% dead. And if you don't have cleanse and you get hit by that tether, you're dead. Wow. That's the equation you learn there. It's from 100% health. It's top side solo kill. Oh, boy, he gets it. 1v1 tall. Another guy we were hyping up coming into this one, able to solo kill Nuggery. But doesn't this fit in there? We're getting a real seesaw here as they need to be winning these side lanes. They win one. The mid lane doesn't go their way. Bono invading with Ooh. pressure. He's level six. Yeah, he's level six. No smite there on Punch either. Bunch of damage going down. One more axe. And a couple of reckless swings may have done it, but he is able to get away and pick up that red buff. Reckless swings, but a reckless play in the top side from what we could tell on the side of Nogwe. I have to see how that starts. In the mid lane, every tether could be a kill. Every scout of the week could be a kill. This is the thick and fast action we were hoping for. Watching the top side here. Nogri wants to push in. Pretty standard Fiora stuff. The cage really, really gets you. So the problem that Fiora has is if you don't actually hit the Q and thus get the cooldown reduction, there's actually a really long cooldown on Q early game. Didn't have the flash. Didn't have his life. That's what happens when you get the baby cage. People die. And there it is. Looks like that was also a fan sign of Tal. So... Happy fans as he picks up a solo kill on one of these guys we were saying 
was a very, very talented top laner in Uggery, just not expecting that one, and will get solo killed. So once again, down one punch and barrel looking towards the mid lane. This time the chain's gonna go wide, but the second one does land. Good response here by Hanwha as a team to come in and support their mid lane. Isn't this so different to early in the season? Because now we have, if the Sky of the Week misses, you die. <laughs> if it yeah. hits, you don't die, or maybe you get a trade kill compared to does Lissandra get the minions and the enemy champion to maximize that Q value? Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how well can the CS under Does turret? Urgot press W to fully negate yeah. all damage? Well, times are changing around the rift, but a 700 gold lead already means that Merc Treads is done for Showmaker and just the bang for your buck double dark seal on the side of Syndra. Ooh, lands that one. The scatter of the week. In goes the ult just to push them away especially because he does have that blue buff and nice little trade there by Tempt. Something we should mention is that after having his flash blown early, uh, Fiora has actually been pushing up and trading to the point of still have a 17 CS lead in the lane. So the kill actually only equalizes gold rather than opening up a big lead for the Yorick. It means that Nogari has largely been Ooh. playing this lead relevantly. I'm surprised that AoE didn't hit. That looks like it hit. It did not, Just apparently. Gonna say. That wasn't the last <laughs> half second either, so I assume that would have interrupted the back in that case. Yeah. But uh, worth noting that Fiora is not as far behind as the solo kill kind of makes you feel in the matchup. Yeah, it is true. I mean, that is Nuggery in a nutshell as well. I mean, he's just going to go as hard as possible and really test his opponent, see if he can get that kind of solo kill. And if not, he's going to get a bunch more CS. Punch coming in here onto the Ocean Drake, but he is spotted. He will actually continue it as his bottom lane will help out. You notice that Olaf is going to try to fight for this because Hamalife don't want to be giving up objectives early, but he's going to be late, it looks like. Yeah, he's late. Laser almost gets it there, actually. Will they consider following up? Tongue Lash on to punch, but it is a Lee Sin who does hop away. They'll look to at least trade onto the blue buff here as it is a four on four in the bottom side. No TPs involved in this one. Barrel. Yeah. Oh, big knockup! Huge one by Barrel. Gets three of them in the back line. They can't get any kills, but what a play there for Barrel to get in position and deny that blue buff. And this is the push and pull when you have the earlier power spikes. You know how my life are feeling pressure. Like, crap, we couldn't get there for the Drake. Let's steal a blue buff. Let's do something proactive. Otherwise, we're going to be the architects of our own demise. Barrel with the flash only can reset blue, but he stops Hanwha Life from getting anything out of that play, and it means the rotation down is wasted as well. That it is, Ocean Drake to the side of Dom One Gaming, and that's gonna make, especially, I mean, all these lanes are gonna get a huge bonus from that one as this laning phase is extending for quite a bit in this one. No big pushing to either side, no plates have been taken on the map just yet. What I'd like to see from the Tom Kench, because he's definitely 20 to 25 CS ahead of what you'd expect for a Relic Shield support to have now. The first item completion, which is the big benefit you get, I really want to see a redemption now. Zeke's has been an item before. You could definitely consider, because of the burst, something like the uh, reduction of damage going into some of the other support items. But I would love to see redemption if we're going for a Lahen style build and have an extra AOE to help the lanes around the map scale. And speaking of scaling, Humble Life trying to find that proactive objective, the Rift Herald should be theirs. You see that they were thinking about contesting that one, but it was really just Showmaker hopping forward to do a bit of scouting, put down a ward, see who else was there. And they end up having to give that one away. And this is with plates still available for two minutes, so you would expect. Although sometimes the pro teams here in LCK don't always use the Rift Herald on time. You would expect them to get some of those plates somewhere on the map. You notice about a 500 gold lead that the extra farming has allowed. Is, uh, uh, we need to pick oh, that one up, guys. Oh, uh, Bono. No. no, 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 no. We need to pick it up. We need to pick it up. It's going to time out. Not, not like this. Up. Please pick it up. Observers, don't show anything else. Exactly. <laughs> this is the full zoom we want. Zoom in. Look at that eye. It's like one big monkey this is me. eye. This is oh, me. it's gone, Papa. No. I'm so sad. No, I was pulsating with it. I know. What? My eyes, they were pulsating <laughs> oh, just okay. like it. I was like, no. <laughs> oh, uh, my day's ruined now. That's like, a big everything one. was going well today. I was in a good mood. It was a good game. It was really even. They put so much oh. into that play. And then Hanma Life just say, 
You know no, what? you can have it. Bono doesn't know, I bet. They even get the zoom in on Bono. Do you reckon he knows yet? <laughs> no chill observers. Do you reckon he knows yet? He might not know yet. It's when he thinks about popping his sweeper that he'll remember. It's like, wait, <laughs> I shouldn't be able to pop my sweeper. Yeah. Would almost expect him not to know. <laughs> there was like a big hush around the crowd. I know, everyone was like is murmuring, like, like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, who is this guy? There's definitely a Scotty doesn't know. Bono doesn't know yeah. song is running through my head right now. <laughs> but uh, really sad times for that one. That means no plates. That's 320 gold. Just up in flames right up now. Up in the air, yeah. And Hummel Life, that was one of their ways to actually push a lead that they need to grow. Remember, their win condition is to stay ahead of gold. They're behind in gold, Valdez, and uh, their way to catch up is now gone. Really not what you wanted. And uh, that could also be a tilter once he realizes it because his team are going to be like, hey, let's go for the push up in the top side. He's like, uh, guys, uh, sorry about this one, but uh, yeah. And I'm one and now doubling down. They're invading and contesting the enemy red. This should be the other way around. Remember, the shoe was supposed to be on Hama Live's foot when it comes to those aggressive players. Yeah. Showmaker poking around. Level 11 is going to be hit soon. Red buff will be claimed by Bono. Was a bit scary, but uh, Lee Sim pretty good at securing those, but obviously not in position. Olaf as well pretty good at doing the burst damage right before the smite, so it's part of the reason why Bono has been able to secure a bunch of these buffs under pressure. Powell has gone for the Bramble Vest, the item that I actually would forget the most. You remember this, but uh, in oh, 20 the name. 2018, yeah. I would forget the name of Bramble Vest every time. <laughs> but... Uh, very necessary, yeah. given that Ravenous Hydra, you know Noggery will rush. He needs the AoE lifesteal when he's fighting against ghouls and minion waves to be able to actually take trades against Yorick. You never want to build this and then they don't build lifesteal. Oh, I'm not actually getting much value out of my thousand gold, but uh, outside of Ramus rushing against Urgot, this is definitely the time to take it it's against the Fiora. But given all of that, that should mean that Yorick should still stay competitive for about the second item phase and second item onwards when Fiora will get going. We can get him going. Level 11. Oh, there it is. And the chains do land. But he's not going to continue on to that one. Didn't really have too much support as actually Punch is looking towards the bottom side. Want to go over the gold again. Of course, your first eye is like, whoa, 40 CS. And you remember it's Frost. Oh, I, uh, I checked it out. He's only down about uh, 80 gold. So and he's right there. And, and he's going to be catching up as well. Exactly. The catch up part is what people forget is that you're getting gold from two different sources. It's not just wages, like we're not just salary men. We're also being able to get our investments going with yeah. the quest when you have Frost Mancy's butt side. Oh boy, Song Yoon in a bit of trouble here, but the stun does go down onto Tom Kench. And well, at the end of the day, it is Tom Kench. Gonna deny any kills that you thought could be coming on the map. Only type of Frost Mancy still left is this duo lane Frost Mancy that was not changed. The Hoffix otherwise live as Beryl's coming in for a double dip. Devour. Looks like it was still down as both of them flash in the bottom lane. Big time respect as now Bono up in the top side. They want to put some pressure onto this top turret. Not going to be able to take it out just yet. But it's a much sicker gank than it first appears. These are the sort of ganks Bono needs to go for. The pressure ganks to take down a turret, to make it a long lane. Temps joining him as well. They're not getting the plates, but damned if they're not going to take this turret. Yeah. I feel like this is a big play that LS would like, where he's like, forget the Clown Drake. We don't need that. We don't care about that. Let's take the top turret. Only problem is that a nice little response here from Punt as he immediately goes down to the bottom side to do his own sort of pressure on the map, and Dublin Gaming themselves will be able to take out a turret. That does mean, though, that you guarantee the phase where Victor's going to really start thinking about just wave clearing a mid. And we know, of course, he's god tier at that. He's a mid laner by trade, known for his line is wave Is he the clear. best? Is Nivia better than him? Who's, who's better? Victor. Victor's Victor better, probably. Victor doesn't his ultimate to do it. Yeah. He has relevant level one through five. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the Victor there. It's Victor unnerfed TF. TF's still pretty good. Sivir, of course, as well. Uh, once you have an Essence Reaver or full stacks onto your mana flow band. Those line wave clear champions, the ones I'm a big fan, because you kill the wave as it walks yeah, into yeah. the lane. Uh, but the fact that they went for this play and gave up the cloud deck, like you say, you think it feels like an out trade, but now the map state is what you wanted, where you have Victor mid lane in a short lane wave clearing. There's no risk about that. And you're going to start rotating around the Fiora. The only downside is that Tempt will get increasingly exposed as the game goes on. He's the worst side laner of the four soul laners in this game. so. Wait and see if they can 
play around that, the way you play around a Syndra getting exposed in long lanes is that you play to your win condition of we need to be aggressive, we need to be assertive, we get outscaled and we use Syndra for objective control, for picks. That's much less about being in a long lane, it's much more about Baron starts spawning and if Hummel Life don't get the Baron, I think Dumb One Gaming win basically every game. Well, it's very clear in terms of uh, what Dalman have to do in terms of their own win conditions. Just deny that one, and we'll see if it does happen as this kind of state you were mentioning has come to life as both Sang Yoon and Nuclear have moved into the mid lane and just begin clearing out these waves and farming up as much as possible. And let's talk about how Dalman are actually not ready for this as much as they should be. We might have to hold the macro point, though, is seeing a three-man dive bot side. The Orc has a lot of buddies. They help push this turret. And, uh, you know, just the movement to get over there. And nobody can really push into the mid lane unless they go for a dive. And that's exactly what they want to do. Can they get Song Yun? Absolutely, they can. One of the big things of Alistair is that you can get those big dives off real quick as the Tom Kench wasn't there to help him out. And also LeBlanc pushing on top. They need that punishment, Valdez. Nice sidestep comes through from Nuclear. I wanted to draw the fans' attention to the build here from Nuclear. It's very different to other builds we've seen this week because there's no effect or no effort put into evolving Q early. It's a recurve bow on top of Blade of the Roman King. We've been seeing Blade into double pickaxe yeah. to get the 100 AD. And the reason why I want to call that out is 100 AD allows Kaiser to trim waves way faster because you can just press Q and most of the minions basically die or one hit away from death. Without that evolution, Victor has a huge pushing advantage while you're rotating three people into Fiora's lane. So you think tempo-wise, that should mean Dumb One Gaming gets screwed. However, that doesn't happen because the turret dive is clean, the Tom Kench is a bit late, and that punishment relieves a lot of pressure before the 100 AD is in for the Kaiser. Yeah, I mean, the second they see that Victor is alone and that Tom Kent is in the bottom lane, they immediately call that out. It was perfectly uh, played by Beryl. Didn't mess up any of his skills, and it's really easy to do that up against Victor, so they do land that one. You were talking about a item for a specific member in the bottom lane. Yay! Looks like he's going for the redemption. Papa Smith, he able to call that one out here. So Frostmancy helps him out here. The reason why I call for what is sometimes a pretty unusual item on Tom Kench, which is the redemption as the first true item, after Swifty Boots and the entire support item, is that Redemption builds way worse than Knight's Vow. Knight's Vow gives you a Kindle Gem, feels great, and it gives you a Chain Vest, feels great. However, building into the Forbidden Idol as a support like Tom Kench is not the same as a Sona or a Soraka that's getting a lot of yeah. value there. But Redemption allows you to play multiple lanes and can also get over some of these tipsy-turvy matchups like the Fiora Yorick and help out the Yorick. But this matchup, we're about an item away from it getting really convincingly on the side of Fiora. That Trinity Force needs to be done. It clearly is not. Well, he needs items and he needs levels and he's down on both right now. Just desperately trying to deal with those ghouls and not having much chance at that just yet. Showmaker up five levels on the Tom Kent. Not able to land the chains that time around as Dom One still trying to push into the mid lane and they will just go for what looks like another Ocean Drake potentially here. As Bono and Tall on the right side is Showmaker looking for another play, but he is going to get stunned up. Can they burst him? He has to flash away. As that time around, Showmaker going for the big play goes a little bit too far. Tams would have really wanted to ult there because it would have oh, forced him out. Oh, he's again. There's the Ignite onto Sang Yoon, but Showmaker himself takes a bunch of damage too. Another close trade in the mid lane. But Tempt actually gets to chunk out Victor because Syndra doesn't ult. If Syndra gets to ult there, he can't re-enter the fight and then tempt any burst. So because of this, this might end up being more competitive for Dumb One Gaming if they want, but they're actually going to show a lot of pause. They know Victor's gone, and yet they still don't invest anything in trying to face check on the Drake. It's an ocean. They give it up. The Infernal next time, though, that's going to be a fight point. That's for sure. Yeah, that's the big one. And, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. Song Yun ends up TPing towards that fight, actually, just to make sure that he is in position. So what you were saying, it seemed like Common Life was expecting Damon to potentially contest if that objective doesn't end up happening. Song Yun still did go for the TP, though. Agreed, just uh, one piece away from that Trinity Force. Would love to get that item here. Around the map, though. 
The map is not feeling like it's as controlled by Hamwa Life as I would be looking for to justify the drop. And the gold lead is still 2,000 for Damwon Gaming, which, given where this game is going, 80 carry versus no 80 carry, Fiora in a side lane, if you're really liking Damwon, even if they're, say, two or 3,000 gold down, so it feels like an effective 5 plus K lead for Damwon Gaming. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna close the game. We already saw in our pre-match stats the Dam One Gaming snowball stats aren't that great. They get first bloods and are only three and three compared to a lot of teams that are six and zero, oh, seven and zero, oh, with a stat like that. So, Dam One Gaming, they've surely been working on their macro game with Coach Kim Jong Soo from Invictus Gaming. That's the thing that clearly these very talented individual players need to get to the same level as other teams in the LCK. On only thing remaining is the macro game. For now, they're in a good spot. They've got a gold lead. They're getting their vision down. And we're looking for Hanwha Life to actually find kind of a combo play, maybe an aggressive Abyssal Voyage. And a kill on Noggery would be a nice start. It looked like they were attempting that, but Key ends up soloing a Rift Scuttler. So not going to be the case just yet, although he is still hanging around that top side, or rather the bottom side. As the Baron is up here, we are about 24 minutes into this game. and. He's just threatening it. I mean, he's going to clear out that ward, and he's just going to say my presence might be able to allow some more pushing here, but in the end, he does just back away. So feels like Damwon, as you were mentioning, still pretty happy about this one as uh, attempt a little bit late to stop the push of Showmaker, and he's actually two levels down even on the LeBlanc. The thing that Hamwa Life are playing around is the fact that with Abyssal Voyage, you outnumber Fiora, and she can't do anything 3v1. She doesn't have any ranged wave push, can't delay turret takes. They're trying to just rotate and piggyback members through that lane, and then say, TP out. Kia, of course, had someone to teleport for a second there, has Abyssal Voyage. It's about outnumbering the Fiora as the lane goes on. Now, she gets three items, and she can do some pretty crazy things. So. There is, to some degree, a timer on that, the effectiveness of such a strategy. They're not getting in a turret. They're not actually changing the game state. We got 100 AD on nuclear now, and even mid lane, the turret is way stronger than you might have assumed, especially given the item build nuclear went for. So you're worried now, at least I am worried now at 25 minutes, that maybe Hamwa Life have officially missed their window because Trinity Force is in. Good news abound for Damwon, and Hamwa Life only a kill on a couple of turrets to their name. It's not just the scaling of the Fiora and the Kai'Sa, it's your mid laner that's miles ahead. It's almost 2,000 gold ahead right now for Showmaker uh, over Tempt, and two levels still, even after Tempt went to the top lane and took out two waves. Maybe that's just because he has to play passively against that LeBlanc, who is going to have that assassination ability not just against Tempt, but also against Sangyun, especially if the Tom Kent is out of position, things definitely feel like they're falling apart a little bit here for Hama Life. And that's before a pop-off, before a huge punch engage. Yeah. Two control wards, one with an Alistair lying in wait, the other one with a Lee Sin, with everything available. This is not the game state that Hama Life are looking for. And now Noguri has that paddock to roam down with two items, and he will be showing a lot less respect on the future trades. Can't wait to see what he can do once he does get more and more items here. Just the two that you're mentioning. Bono thinking about helping out here, or at least getting vision down. He's two control four wars levels there. down, Valdez. Yeah. He's free food for Showmaker. Okay, Nuggery not I, I, strong I, enough just yet. The ult was popped, huh. but he was not confident enough to go forward with that one. How did that begin for him to be at half health when we watched? I guess he face checked a lot of damage. Maybe he got caught in the cage Kyle. once again. Maybe doing the Krugs or something. I mean, at this point, we haven't had too much other action. Maybe we can get a replay of that play. Wouldn't mind it myself, but uh, we are definitely going to get some action now as the Infernal is about to spawn. And the Infernal was that flare point we expected. Now we get to back him, but that means the dumb one are not in a vision advantage like we saw earlier. And while I'm able to control this area, how much did Dumb One feel that they need the Infernal? Because they should already have the scaling. Infernal is, of course, the double dip Ooh. on that. Straight Here slow. comes the TP coming on in. Showmaker looking for that assassination. Couldn't quite get it, but Nuggery in the backside. They're going to try to turn on top of him. Barrel himself taking a bunch of damage. And now Hamalai thinking about just disengaging off of this one as they get away with the Infernal and nobody goes down just yet. Showmaker thinking about getting in there once again, has the burst damage, but the chain's not going to land in its full effect, and so they do get away. 
Nogari's diving in. Oh boy, Tempt backing out the board. That's a bit of a mistake. Too greedy on that one. And now Tall thinking about getting in there. Knows he does have the Tom Kent. Should be okay, but that one kill gonna be a big one. I agree with you there, Valdez, and that means that suddenly we have to reevaluate the play. You saw how hard it is for Damon Gaming without a vision lead to actually fight 5v5. They want to poke in or get face checked on when they're chasing for damage. They're a lot less potent. But the exit kill means that Nogari can push onto this inner turret. I feel like I'm trying to recreate how all this happened off screen, but my guess is that Nogari face checked the same brush that Tempt backed in and took a lot of damage. So when Tempt backed, he was like, there can't be a ward here. Yeah. The ward being there is actually it's super an old relevant. Ward. Exactly. It's an old ward, but damned if it's not a important dog of war because it allows him to just walk in, repose the right ability, and get an almost instant kill on the syndrome. Definitely a nice chunk of gold as well. We'll go straight into his pockets. Only has the one kill, but of course a 750, now 800 gold bounty, as is the way of current League of Legends. And Nogari has the two disgusting parts of the end of this Spear of Shoujin build. The Kindle Jam Longsword 950 gold recipe is such a stinker, but BS Sword. On top of that, and you have Spear of Shoujin, that means we repost an all the time. Makes basically every side lane matchup the most winning ever for Fiora. And she was pretty good at two items Here already. Here we go. He's trying his luck already, but he's still down a level. Not just yet, but perhaps thinks he has better sustain overall. But he's getting super low. Nuggery playing with fire. He's not going to be denied this time around, but does have to flash away. Still don't have that item break point, still needs the third one, and that means the Warden's Mail and just Yorick's innate damage is too much for the Fiora to deal with. This is going. Better than expected for 30 minute Fiora versus Yorick side lane. Good news story for Humble Life, and they need them desperately. So the map is being overrun by Damwon. You can just see it here in this left side as Tempt is scared to be under his own turret. And he has Pano on the Olaf, who's still down five levels. And Nuclear and Fiora. Nogari just getting stronger and stronger in this game. I wonder if Nogari needs to go into something like a Executions Calling, and the matchup is in mid. Okay, trying to engage on this one, but Punch is just getting chunked out up there on the top side. Now trying to get on top of Sangyu, but Good Devour does come in. But look at Nuclear doing that damage. He's going in, but he's going to get popped in the face by that Yorick. They're trying to win this one, but here's Nuggery. Going to join the fight on time, which means that Hama Life not able to continue. What a crazy 4v4 that starts with Leeson having no interaction against Olaf. He can't kick him away. He can't get out. Dies with his flash available. Didn't really have a spot. Died just a second before he would have claimed it. Ends up being two for two overall. Both bot lane carries erased means no Baron threat on either side. That's very true. You can see what happens though, the attitude of the players right after Hama Life immediately back away. They don't want any of that. Bono might be a level under, but there's no interaction at this point. Felicin doesn't have burst rotation, didn't have Q available, just dies. Showmaker pops in. He doesn't instant kill, kill the Sung Yoon, but Sung Yoon does get taken out. But it's a trade of Nuclear's life. He's in the cage amusingly at the end. Both Tempt and Nogari are not there. The 4v4 is a pretty bloody one in what has been otherwise only an eight kill game. Well, the spear is finished here for Nogari. We'll have to take a look at these uh, in these fights, but at the same time, Tal is just insanely strong. Thorn Mayo is a pretty big one. Yeah. I do wonder. And more on top of that. You just <laughs> need to kill the damn maiden, but that, of course, is way harder than it first yeah. sounds. It's kind of like the CC Katarina, by the way, lull analysis that doesn't necessarily work, but Kat's broken enough at the time. Yeah. And you'll notice that it seems like Kanwa piggybacking. Yeah, they know that this is the moment where Nogri is going to try to fight, so Sang Yun just sits in the bottom lane and says, well, if he goes for it, we can try to 2v1 here. Well, speaking of outnumbering, means that Damwon can have more members topside, so they take an inner turret, pop the Banshee Veil on Tempt. Two Banshee Veils here, both of them very relevant for the pick damage. You notice the Tal a lot more reticent to chase for damage now. He's feeling big, and he is a big boy. He's got, he's tied with nuclear. Oh, uh, no, he's close. He's down 10 CS with nuclear in terms of the CS, but he has so many kills and so much damage. He 
Here we go. Okay. This is the trade. Trying to get that repose down, and he does finish off that ultimate. Can he have the damage here? The redemption is not on time as Key. Just a little bit late on that one, not able to save him. Just looks like you're broken when you have the Spear of Shoujin and all those abilities that you know have real cooldowns don't anymore with 40% CDR. Yeah. And the aspect of the dragon, uh, the old Essence Flare passive on that item. That means that Yorick is down for 40 seconds. Time to start a Baron and Nuclear does plenty of damage, i.e. or no. Well, will they try into this one? Fiora's TP is about 10, 15 seconds away, but she's just gonna push that bottom lane and try to take out a turret. The Baron does get low, but Dom One Gaming gonna begin the dance, the song and the dance that they are totally fine with as the bottom lane is getting crushed. And this is the problem is, song and a dance is usually kind of a nice eloquent castaway. I'm talking about a ruse, right? There's no ruse when Fiora will just run at you and do that again. He's already got ultimate up again. If he had a bit more mana, he could just repeat the same play. And um, Kent's not enough to bail that one out. Feels like it only gets better and better. And he can even start building defensive stats for other issues. He's going for GA and also something like a Spirit Visage for attacking both lane and team fight. We watch the replay and remember, the moment the oldest popped, the good news starts rolling for Nubber. He, he gets in range finally for the redemption and tries to go for the devour, but he is a little bit late on that one. And they were probably calling for that one because Ta was just running straight at the Fiora, you know, but wasn't enough in the end. And Nogari finally begins to look strong on this Fiora. Small chance it could be Bloodthirster as well into Spirit Visage for a super high lifesteal build. We used to see this on Fiora uh, in previous metas, I think 2016 Cuvee. Built quite a lot of that on Samsung Galaxy at the time. He walks up to an Ocean Drake, and this is really more about getting Elder to spawn as Dumb One Gaming scaling has come together. So that one comes in, means 39.30 or so we will be having the Elder spawn. It's more about the buff than it is, of course, about amplifying Cloud and Ocean Drake, and also about forcing Humble Life to walk up when Dumb One Gaming have to be ready for a fight. Yeah. Humble Life. Definitely walking forward now. They're gonna just start the yep. Baron. Okay, here we go. Desperate attempt. They just need to get into this one. They want to go for a turn. Here goes Fiora into that bottom lane. How will Dom on Gaming try to get into this one? There's the engage. Big time knock up, and it goes the way of Hamo Life. But where's the damage from the side of Dom on Gaming? Two of them are gonna be taken down immediately. But take a look at Fiora. They need to get the back. They need to save their base. Can anyone get back is the question. One back. Looks like Yorick and Victor are going to be able to get back in time to save that base. Huge importance as Dom1 Gaming not able to stop enough for the backs. And now they're trying to get onto Nogari here. Can he just burst key is the question. Able to get the stun down though is Tempt. Oh, Nogari, he's still on the run. He's going to get away. Oh, just barely going to go down to that one, but Song Yun is going to pay the price here. We do have Nogar, uh, Nuclear actually in the top side trying to push on as this game just goes insane mode now. The Nuclear still going. Going 1v1. Tempt is going to flash away from that one, but Nuclear, once that Hex Drinker does go down, can he get on top of him is the question. He's got that red buff, but it looks like the inhibitor is going to go down first on foremost as Nuclear will get away. What an amazing passage of action. We need the ultra zoom out and we get the last gasps of your lungs there, Valdez, because so much is happening. Because the Yakuri Sacks is what Dumb One Gaming have to do. Stop the backs, allow Nuggery to keep pushing into side laning and looking for exit picks and exit objectives because they were always gonna trade down when the Baron is coming. If they lose the Baron here in a 50-50, they win the game instantly to Dumb One Gaming. Without the Baron, they'd probably still win out on the trade. It was still the right moment for Hamwa Life. They'd lost map control, as we know that they can't really set up the fights anymore because of the scaling advantage. So you have to try things like this. They get the second back. One in the pit, that's the victor. The other one, the Yorick, in the pixel brush there. We watch the replay here. Nuggery probably could have considered a 1v2, but he knows that Tom Kent is walking down as well, and he can't 1v3. On the exit, I'm never going to write the eulogy for a Spear of Shoujin Fiora until we know for sure, until we get the kill feed information there. An Overwatch League level of analysis because you're never 100% sure <laughs> yeah. on that Fiora. Nuclear continues to push up and this is the right move. He gets an exit kill earlier and he can swoop in, take out Tempt thanks to his extra shield and eventually does that take out this inhibitor as well. Doesn't take him out of the rift, but does take him out yeah. of defending the objective. Gets him out of the fight and now 
We did have Hanwha Life go in, but did they get themselves into a bad fight as Nuggery looking for the flank? How many bad guys can he walk up to? Well, you can see that Hanwha Life trying to play that Phalanx style. They get the stun there, but in goes Nuggery into that back line alongside N Nuclear. And the engage comes in, and it looks like Hanwha Life is just falling apart as Dumb One Gaming running straight at them. It looks like Tall, the only one left available, not going to be able to go 1v5 this time around. As all the knockups in the world come around, they do get flanked. It looks like game one will go the way of Dom One Gaming. And that scaling was no dirty word here. This is the scaling dirty secret that Fiora on this patch is. Rushes in, they finish the game. Dom One Gaming did enough, and Hanwha Life, they just couldn't get it going in the early game enough for this late game to be anything but Fiora carry. And there it was. You were mentioning it at even 22, 24 minutes. Dom One Gaming felt in control just because Hama Life weren't really able to push the advantage in the early game that they had in order to get ahead of the scaling of Damon Gaming. And Damon Gaming looked much better tonight up against Hama Life compared to some of their other games that we have seen in recent times. But wasn't it a fun game as well? The champions change, the meta moves forward a little bit with Frostmancy now a sometimes thing. And we see that Damon, things fall into place and we're seeing two teams coming off a 4-0 week. We're seeing two teams playing with their tails up rather than licking their wounds after difficult losses. And that was felt on both sides. There were good moments for both, but Dumb One Gaming had less of the onus of aggression on them, and the aggression couldn't pay off to the maximum value for Hanwha Live. And that's what the coaches are both going to be talking about coming into game number two. A nice follow-up series, a follow-up game, after our fun Afrika Sandbox series yesterday. That was a good one. That was a lot of fun. It feels like things are getting much more competitive here at the LCK, which in the beginning it was like, well, there are the Western teams, yep. the good teams versus the Eastern teams, the bad teams on our little standings meme we had here in Korea. But it doesn't feel like that anymore as some of these lower teams, Afrika coming in, Damwon technically on the east side. But if they win this, they secure fourth place ahead of Hanwha Life and ahead of King Zone. So it's a big one for them. They get a fantastic start here, and it's very well deserved after that game. And the prep for both teams is, guys, this is our gut check. Where are we at as a team? Is the question that Dom One Gaming and Hanwha Life coaches be asking. Hanwha Life, they've felt this so many times, being the line where if you're better than us, you're in playoffs. If you're worse than us, then you're in relegations. They've always been there at six for the last year since they picked up this massive sponsor in Hanwha. And that's why they are so desperate to win against a fellow contender. Game one doesn't go their way, and now they have to fight back with a reverse sweep. That they do, and it's not going to be easy, especially with the way that game wins. The, the pick ban looks relatively even overall. I couldn't say that either team kind of swooped it away. but uh, They were both doing different things, yeah, and their comps exactly. made sense for what they want to do. So there's no real wagging of the finger. I'm sure people were saying, what's this Fiora? Could have been Jax, could have been something safer, until you see where Fiora really gets going. Yorick did a whole lot of damage, and I would say at least 28,000 of that was to Fiora in the yeah. side lane. It worked till it didn't, a classic Fiora story. That's the way it goes. Maybe up against a better team, Dom One wouldn't have been able to get away with a bunch of that scaling, but just remember even the early game, the LeBlanc-Lee-Sin combination to essentially take Syndra out of the game from the beginning. If they don't get that early kill, you have a Syndra that's doing more damage. You can shut down the LeBlanc in the side lanes, and maybe then Hanwha could have pushed their advantage. Loving these live pictures. We're seeing some coaches with some arms crossed. A lot needs to change for Hanwha Live to get back in this series. They absolutely do. Should be a fun one, guys. We're not expecting the 2-0, but Dom One looked very good here in game number one. We'll have to wait and see if Hanwha Life can tie it up after the break.